The Doppler effect is kind of our last topic for our unit for grade 11 waves and sound. It's, I hope, a little bit intuitive, and it's something you'll have literally heard of before and heard of in a science class before. So if you haven't yet um, listened to the video clip, that will explain it right there. If you don't remember, uh, way back in grade 9 astronomy, uh, you talked about the red shift of starlight, and there's something called the blue shift. Um, star's color was shifted towards the red if it's moving away, towards the blue if it's moving towards. Uh, the reason for the shifting is exactly the same as the reason for the shifting in the pitch of the race car when you listen to that audio clip. We can't see sound waves, but let's say we had an object right here, that little dot in the middle, and it's putting out sound waves. Uh, the sound will travel uh, the same speed in all directions because, of course, speed depends on the medium. So since it's in, let's say, air, the air is the same all the way around it. So the sound is going to travel the same speed in all directions. If we had a special camera that could take a picture and see the air pressure, if we had a drone flying above with that special camera, if we took a picture of something that had given off sound waves after some time, the picture would be those concentric circles uh, like you're seeing in that image. Some waves have moved to the right, some sound to the left, some towards the top of the page, some towards the back of the page. The circles could represent where the high pressures are. Okay, before I scroll down and show you, what would it look like if the thing that was giving off the sound waves was moving to the right while giving off the waves? If we had that special camera and the object were moving to the right, if we could take a picture of the sound waves, this is what it would look like. They were traveling the same speed in all directions, but as the objects, those waves that were moving to the right, the thing that was making the waves also moved to the right, so they didn't spread out as much. So on this side, the waves are squished together. And on the side, I'm going to say behind the object, they're spread out. That is Doppler effect. That's what you're hearing when a race car drives by. When the race car is approaching you, you hear these waves that are squished together. And then once the car goes by you, you hear these waves that are more spread out. As we've talked about in previous videos, sorry, bad page break here. Uh, when the waves are compressed, really what that means is it's a shorter wavelength. And shorter wavelength connects to a higher frequency. So when the object is coming towards you, those compressed wavelengths make a shorter wavelength, which means we hear it as a higher pitch. Behind the object, the waves are more spread out. And as we've talked about before, spread out waves, a longer wavelength, connecting it to frequency means we're hearing a lower frequency. So as a car approaches you, we hear a higher frequency because the waves are squished together. As a car gets farther away from you or is, yeah, getting away from, driving away from you, you would hear a lower frequency because the wavelengths are stretched out. We're going to skip the proof for the uh, Doppler effect, but the frequency perceived, that's what you hear, is related to the frequency that the object's actually given off multiplied by a factor. The factor is related to the speed of sound and the speed of the object. If the object is moving away from you, Remember when it's moving away, you hear lower frequency. In that case, our equation has the plus sign in it, which would mean the denominator is a little bit bigger, which would mean our perceived frequency is a little bit lower. When the object is moving towards you, then we use the exact same equation, just on the denominator, use a negative sign, which makes the denominator a little bit smaller, which makes the whole fraction a little bit bigger, which means the perceived frequency is a little bit higher. Um, there's some examples down here for you to go through, but you'll notice um, really there's, let's count them up, speed of the object, speed of the sound, frequency, and the perceived frequency. If I give you three of those things, you should be able to solve for the fourth. And remember, sometimes you're not given the speed of sound. Instead, you're given the temperature, because from the temperature, we know what the speed of sound is. I'll leave it to you, work through those three examples. There's a worksheet and a check-in based on all this. Email if you have any questions.